1565. And members, we have several hundred um, testifiers, and we're going to. Um, the Office of Homeland Affairs. Um, OHA opposes this measure. Uh, we have a, a number of concerns with each part of the bill. Um, and I won't go through all of them, but I'd just like to highlight um, a few of our major areas of concern, if I may. Um, you know, first, you know, we know that this measure not only provides for science and technology research uses in any um, colony zone, uh, subject to pretty relaxed standards uh, for approval, but it would also allow for such uses anywhere in the conservation district, subject to the very same standards. Um, you know, our conservation lands, uh, in many ways, are some of our most valuable lands. You know, these are our watershed lands. These are um, lands of uh, high cultural, ecological significance. And so we would have we have substantial concerns about a measure that would allow for um, essentially, you know, potentially industrial scale development. You know, like we've seen on the summit of Halakala at Science City, for example. Um, anywhere in the conservation district, is subject to um, the same standards for development as in the urban district. Um, you know, secondly, we also have concerns regarding the expedited um, dispute resolution and approval process um, that's provided for in this bill. Uh, you know, I guess, you know, per this bill, it would provide for a 30-day mediation um, period uh, in view of a contested case hearing. Um, you know, we have to be very careful with our lands here in Hawaii. You know, we have so few lands, um, and they're so important uh, in so many ways to such a wide range of people. And how we use these lands can, can have broad impacts far beyond the specific land parcel issue. And so um, you know, that's why we have like contested case hearing processes where we can kind of go through and sort out all of these issues and concerns, um, you know, and go forward with land uses with our eyes wide open. Um, you know, and sometimes it does take a long time, especially if it's a you know, complicated, controversial issue, but uh, maybe it should take a long time in those cases. Um, so um, we'd have concerns about the expedited process where um, it would provide for only 30 days to resolve all these issues and build a record and so forth. Um, and finally, you know, we note that, you know, this measure would exempt uh, science and technology research leases from, you know, public auction, appraisal, a number of other uh, um, mechanisms that would otherwise be required under Chapter 171. Um, and we note that, you know, public auction, appraisal, and, and, and all these things, um, these are the mechanisms that assure both the public and the state um, that we're not getting shortchanged um, in the private use of our public lands. Um, you know, our public lands are subject to the public trust, and, you know, um, allowing for nominal leases for up to 65 years, um, of our public lands to private entities uh, for, uh, you know, for nominal consideration could you know, undermine the public's interest as well as the state's um, duties and obligations to um, uphold public trust. Um, so I have to answer any questions. Uh, otherwise, we respectfully ask that you hold this measure. Thank you. Thank you. Ahonui Mims, Demont Connor. Demand Kana, Chair of Home Monopono Political Action Committee. And uh, for me, um, I believe that this um, this bill would, on the flip side, would violate Article 11, Section 5 of the Hawaii Constitution. Um, because um, this, is a, this is really a special interest uh, bill, on the flip side, I say, because you're trying to protect the state from from the uh, um, challenges by by Olahui for what's happening on Mauna Kea. This is a knee-jerk reaction to Mauna Kea. You know, it's, I find it amazing that um, the way uh, American jurisprudence works, for many years, American jurisprudence was working just fine um, when blacks and, and Hispanics were routinely found guilty in courts all across the country and uh, subjected to death penalties and whatnot, heavy sentences. But the minute O.J. Simpson was found not guilty, all of a sudden everybody said, hey, we gotta change the system. Well, that's the same thing here. You know, the system was working just fine with contested cases and all that, and we were on the losing end. A lot of time, Allahui was on the losing end. And then as soon as we get a ruling in our favor in the Supreme Court on Mauna Kea, all of a sudden, we gotta change the system. You know, and um, so this is really an attack upon Allahui. Um, the process is there for a reason. 
and only through contested cases can you really get to the nitty gritty issues, then it can be taken up to the appellate courts, uh, to the circuit court and then appellate courts. Now you guys wanna shortcut everything um, because you guys don't like the way um, this thing is being drawn out. So when it becomes a problem for the government, all of a sudden, we're gonna curtail your rights and privileges, and then um, we're gonna fix them that way. To me, that that is that is an abuse of your powers. And a number of these individuals have testified in support or offering comments. If you'd like to, again, specify or clarify those comments, that's why we're asking you to stand up and identify yourselves. The vast majority are in opposition, however. That was called earlier, but I didn't please, please come up. Good morning, my name is Bimo Akiona. Um, first of all, I wanna thank you for looking at this and considering it, I hope you do the right thing. Um, to follow up on what was just said, I too believe this is a response to the, what happened regarding the 30 meter telescope and its history on Mauna Kea. The timing of this bill, in accordance to what happened there, seems too obvious. And the one thing I'd like to say about that is the perception being put out about what happened on Mauna Kea presents the people who stood there night after night, blocked the traffic and all of these things as bad people. We have the Attorney General's office here. The Attorney General is now our Lieutenant Governor, has sought funds to address what happened on Mauna Kea, over a million dollars, as if that's a problem. But what did those people in Mauna Kea who stopped the construction of that telescope actually do? They enforced the law, according to the Supreme Court. These were not the bad people. What happened is there was an imperfection in government, the way these permits were issued, the people involved, and it got to the point where more people, thousands, said, we're not gonna let this happen, we're gonna sacrifice ourselves, and they did. Over and over and over again, over a year. I have a background in law enforcement. I followed this for over three years. I think I'm pretty objective in how I look at things. And I would say there's a real threat to us based on what's going on now. And this law is a perfect example of it. If the people who had done their jobs correctly in the past had done their jobs correctly, Mauna Kea would have never happened the way it happened. And what this bill is doing is saying, you know what, there's too many people involved, let's narrow this down. Not unlike what Donald Trump is doing, where very few people now have a say in what actually happens. This bill does that. So I would ask you today to do the right thing. This bill was introduced last year. It hasn't changed at all. If it had, it had any merit, why wasn't it passed last year? Why was it rejected last year? And is there even less merit today? Obviously, because the 30 meter telescope history is now within the Supreme Court system. And for us to look at a bill now and say, let's, let's pass this bill, while that process is happening in the Supreme Court should make us all feel uncomfortable. It's like we're saying the judiciary system is not good. We have three branches of government. We've all got to work together to make government right for the people. We cannot have the legislative branch negate the judiciary branch. And so I ask you today to kill this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thane, Thane Curry. Hello, my, I'm Kanakamole, member of the Royal Kamehameha, Yekahi, Pukaonui. I'm the president of Kaninamuku Voyaging Academy. I'm a retired merchant mariner and retired senior regional port engineer for the Pacific Basin. I've traveled all through Polynesia, Asia. And the most important thing is respect. We can put away all the politics, put away everything else, is respect. If any of you ever read the, the book, The Kumulipo, The Kumulipo is the creation. You read the book, you'll understand why I'm here. Everything is, if we can go to Kukaniloko, we can go to Manake, we can go to Haleakala, we can go to any place of worship, your church. What is the most important thing? Respect. That's the key of life. Once you disrespect, life changes, and we know that. When you disrespect the law, you commit a crime, pilau. 
that's what we're doing here. I, for me, my children was born with respect. I teach them respect. That's the whole message. What we're telling the world, we can disrespect. Ole, that's wrong. We teach the world to respect. What a telescope gonna do to put food on my table? The most important thing is our land, our aina. Take care of the people here first before you look out there. And we're gonna take our own land. The pollution, the overpopulation, that's all disrespect. The key word we all need is respect. Our ancestors here, I, rep I represent Evie Kupuna, the ancestor. They guide us like Hokolea. They take us where we want to go. If you believe in which you know how, the important thing is trust. Without trust, the hell is not going to make it over. Without belief and respect of Akua, of Kanalo, Ku, Kanilono, he ain't going to make it. This is Hawaii, remember. This is who we come from here. We have to respect what is given to us, protect it. We already abused it. Pro Harbor, look and eat the fish. I born and raised there. I used to lay net in there. Kiss the Ninui. Aole cannot disrespect. I said, you get no more food. Look at the beaches. Sea level rising, we built, built property right up to the shoreline. It's going to lose disrespect. When, you're not, when you don't respect the Aina or Moana, the ocean, it comes back to you as Mother Nature. It's natural. We need to respect Mauna Kea, Haleakala, so all our children can see what respect means and sacredness means. That's the key. When we can teach the young ones to believe and to learn to respect, we'll be okay. When we teach them, you can challenge respect and you can challenge sacredness, you got a problem. I thank you for allowing us to do this today. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Chair Evans and Vice Chair Kioho Kalole and members of the committee, mahalo for allowing me to testify. Um, I am the chair of the Kalahui Hawaii Political Action Committee, and we were the um, committee that put together the form testimony. So I just wanted to report that as of 9.30 today, we did have 374 um, testimonies in opposition. And I encourage you to read the comments, the individualized comments. There's a, some really good comments in there. Um, they're still coming in, the testimonies. Um, uh, but we do um, oppose House Bill um, 1565, um, uh, which undermines the land use regulations and the purpose of conservation districts in the interest of science and technology developers. It also removes the contested case process through which people can publicly present evidence and argument. It also um, authorizes the counties to permit science and technology uses that would otherwise be prohibited. Creates a fast track for certain side tech projects at the expense of critical land use regulations and public procedures. Land use laws and regulations are the laws that determine how all the lands in Hawaii are used, developed, protected, or conserved. Um, um, it also um, proposes a transparent end run around the Hawaii Supreme Court ruling that invalidated the 30 meter telescope conservation district use permit for construction on the summits of Mauna Kea. The court ordered the BLNR to redo the TMT land use permitting process under which the TMT would have to meet eight criteria in order to be built on the Mauna Kea Conservation District. This bill would change that process such that the TMT would only have to meet one or two criteria. Most importantly, the TMT would not be subject to contested case hearings. 
Um, this bill adversely affects um, the sacred summits of Mauna Kea and Haleakala by creating a fast track for industrial astronomy, geothermal development, and G GMO test fields projects in the Land Use Commission uh, use permitting systems, which affects all lands. It also undermines all land use designations, conservation, agricultural, rural, and urban, which are put in place to guard improper development and to secure the public trust. Um, and it is also contrary to the state's constitutional obligation to protect the public trust, natural resources, environmental rights, as well as Native Hawaiian customary and tradition, custom, customary and tradition right, traditional rights, um, Hawaii State Constitution Article 11, Sections 1 and 9, Article 12, Sections 4 and 7. So I just wanted to read that testimony aloud because there are 374 um, <laughs> copies of that form testimony that has been sent to you and give voice to to the um, the Kanaka who actually submitted it. Of the 374 that submitted, 243 of them are registered voters in Hawaii. So, um, and they came from all over the islands. So I wanted to just um, mahalo you for this time and also um, Kalahui Hawaii Political Action Committee is in opposition to this bill as well. Thank you. Thank you. Melissa Pakwa, Melissa Ponder, Mercy Riddy, Muriel Kalahiki, Michael Chun. First of all, I'm the person who hand delivered a letter to all of you, and I want to commend your staffs for being so welcoming and open to the reception of that letter. Um, and I know that's not an easy thing. Um, and I say that particularly because for me, learning all these things about testimony and all the things that I'm learning um, is, is sometimes a little bit intimidating to come and speak or drop things off. So I really want to commend all of your staff for being so welcoming. Um, that leads me to something Uncle Bimo said on the same issue, on the same thing though, I walk up and there are um, this intense police presence. And the difference between those two and how I feel about presenting really makes a difference. And I just want to I know it's not really related to the bill, but it is related to the bill. And I just want to throw that out because as a person who is a settler here, I'm not Native Hawaiian, but I'm learning. Um, I can't possibly feel what it feels to be Hawaiian and to know that there are people who don't want me to do certain things because of that. So I can't speak to that. But I can only speak to my own feelings and the difference between what I've experienced in all of your offices and what I felt this morning walking up is really, it's really visible. And I just wanted you guys to know that. Um, I am in direct, and I'll just move on. I'm in direct opposition to Bill 1565. As someone said to me yesterday, this bill has like 10 lives. It's, it's more than a cat. It has, it keeps coming back and keeps coming back and it keeps coming back. It's time to totally kill this bill um, for all the reasons that these illustrious people have written. Um, and I'm just gonna close it with, um, sorry, I'm really nervous. Um, there will be people who speak after me and um, they can give you the more of the details. I'm speaking so that you know and reminded that, um, as Uncle said over here, we're real people. And you know that, but it's good to see us here and to to show you that, we, that we're that we here. Um, when I first moved here um, a while back ago, a very um, brilliant person said to me, you, your feet touch the ground here and you breathe the air here. So therefore you have Kuleana. And I take that really very seriously, and I hope that you do too. Please do not defer this bill, oppose this bill, and get rid of it totally. Thank you. Okay. Aloha mai kakou. My name is Candice, and um, Candice Fujikane. I'm an English professor at UH. I'm also a board member of Kahea, the Hawaiian Environmental Alliance. Uh, Bianca Isaki wrote a letter, um, wrote in testimony opposing Bill um, 1565, and I wanted to elaborate on some of the points that she raised there. So um, I think it is just amazing to hear the overwhelming testimony in opposition to House Bill 1565. 
five. I think that speaks to the way that the people are standing kupa'a for the conservation district uses of the land. We really want to protect the, these conservation lands. And um, um, in addition to um, our specific objections to House Bill 1565, um, uh, we, we're concerned about the broader implications. So the bill proposes an end run around the Hawaii Supreme Court's ruling, um, invalidating the 30 meter telescopes uh, conservation district use permit. And the court ordered the BLNR to redo the TMT land use uh, permitting process under which the TMT would have to meet eight criteria in order to build uh, in the conservation district. This bill would change that process such that projects like the TMT would only have to meet one or two criteria. So most importantly, the controversial projects like the TMT would not be uh, subjected to contested case hearings. So what I wanted to emphasize here is that Supreme Court Justice Sabrina McKenna says that justice must have the appearance of justice. The problem with this bill is that it looks too much like the Public Land Development Corporation, the PLDC. And as we remember, that bill, that act was repealed because of the people's objections. And we already see at this very early stage just the tip of the iceberg of how much people are opposed to this particular bill. Um, I'd also like to remind the committee that in 1998, the State Office of the Auditor found very specific and significant deficiencies in the management of Mauna Kea by the Department of Land and Natural Resources and by the university. Very specifically, the audit found that the university appeared to place a higher value on developing observatories than on protecting Mauna Kea's natural and cultural resources, and that the DLNR was not engaged in monitoring and enforcing the permitting requirements. So I want you to remember that that was the finding in 1998. The audits in 2014 and 2017 have not changed very much. The problem is still that the DLNR uh, is mismanaging Mauna Kea. And so we do need important processes like the contested case hearing. And as I, as you know, and many others have watched how much of a huge sacrifice people who were the petitioners in that case put forward they sacrificed tremendous parts of their lives they just, they sacrificed jobs um, their time with their children they it was eight months of, of testimonies and and the contested case hearing meetings and for these things to happen you can see the toll that it takes on the public but it's because they believe in protecting the conservation district use lands that they come out and they make such a huge sacrifice. This bill is a slap in the face to those petitioners because it's proposing to remove the contested case hearing process, which gives them a voice. It's very important. I urge you to kill this bill. It came up two years ago. It keeps coming up. As Cheryl said, we just need to kill it. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Aloha, my co chair, vice chair, and representatives. Um, I, my name is Kimmer Horson, Big Horse. I'm a 37 year old combat veteran, uh, humanities baccalaureate degree from HPU, working on another baccalaureate from history and politics from Chaminade. I'm Navajo and Dene Haudenosaunee. I come from the first people of America, and I've lived in Hawaii 10 years. I live in the Ahupua'a or Waimanalo. And I've studied Hawaiian studies here um, in the community college program, uh, state funded by uh, like UH Manoa, Kapi'olani, Windward Community College. I just want to speak from, as a combat veteran, as a warrior, um, as, and, I, and I totally, I approve of all the, uh, and validate all the testimonies that have been given today that, these people are not terrorists. They are warriors because they see that we're not returning the land the way we got it. We're not returning it in better condition than how we received it when we got here. Remind ourselves that these Kanaka Maoli were here first. They were here, born from Papahanaumoku, which is Mauna Awakea. 
and that's the difference. America was totally later on, totally illegal. This is a country of Hawaii. It's not the United States. I was. This is study. This is education taught in UH Manoa. That was taught to me. I took Kingdom of Hawaii political science class. Dr. Sai. I just want to mention, we mention in my own culture, we have the seventh generation. We have people and children that have yet to be born that will inherit this aina. Do we want to return it to them with telescopes and concrete and like the kupuna said earlier, do we want to return it? Do we want housing that's flooded and, and the waters are rising? Um, Right now, it's critical that we take care of Mother Earth, that we take care of the Aina, we take care of the stars, the galaxies. I spent time on Mana Awakea and have seen the stars and have seen how beautiful and pristine it is up there. We don't need a telescope. We already have 13 telescopes up there. We need to keep it the way it is. Think of all the people that would be up there bringing pollution, bringing traffic, bringing their mana, bringing whatever they have. And it's like, it's just not, it's not good. I don't, I personally don't believe I am against this bill, 1565. And I think we should all remember Hawaii for its pristine mountains, its clean air, its endemic plants that are endemic to Mauna Awakea in that region. That's how we should remember Hawaii, not for a telescope or some man-made anything. And remember to keep Hawaii sustainable. We want Hawaii to be sustainable. Aloha mai kako, and thank you very much. My name is Asa Dundun Isne, which means tall, swift woman. Mahalo. Ms. Horson, thank you for your service. Um, yeah, yeah, that way, not this way. <laughs> Aloha, Rep. Evans and members of the committee. I'm Henry Curtis, Executive Director of Life of the Land. We strongly oppose this bill and House Bill 2564, which is scheduled later for this week and would get rid of all contest case proceedings for BLNR and the Water Commission. That is fundamentally the wrong way to go in a democracy. We categorically oppose this bill. Thank you. Aloha kaku. My name is Laulani Teal, and um, I'm with the Ho'opai Peace, Ho'opai Pono Peace Project, which does uh, Ho'oponopono and peacemaking within the community, uh, often around many issues, like many of those that are in question with this bill. Um, I would like to say that from the perspective of peace, it is extremely, extremely important that you hold this bill in committee and do not pass it, not defer it, but totally hold it. And the reason for that is that what we have here fundamentally is we have conflict between the people, the people of Hawaii, the people who are standing for change and protection of the land and protection of our resources and those interests that would like to convert those resources into money-making potential. Now, when there is such a conflict that clearly needs to be worked out, you know, and if this means is taken away from the people, what you have is a state of war, you know, because then the people have no recourse. They have no recourse to resolve these matters in any way within the civil framework. And their only recourse, because they are dedicated to the land, they are part of the land, this is their kupuna, this is their ancestral um, kuleana, 
that they have to carry forward. It doesn't belong to them. It belongs to the future generations, all of the future generations of all of the people, not only for Hawaii, but for the world. Because when you're talking about places like Mauna Kea and Haleakala and you know many of these other places, you're talking about places that we are guarding for all of humanity. You know, that, that, that's, that, that's where that caretakership is. And I will have to say that while there are questions that need to be worked out about how science and technology fits into this whole picture, that does need to be worked out, but it absolutely must not be forced on the people. And by doing anything, anything but completely stopping this measure, you would be forcing those people into a battle. And that's not a battle that we should be fighting. What we should be fighting is we should be fighting together for what it takes to make something that's good for everyone. And so in doing that, I beseech you all to have the courage to do that which is right, that which is pono. And the only pono thing you can do right now is to hold this bill in committee to take a strong stand for the people, the citizenry of Hawaii and their rights as citizens as well as as protectors of this place. And that's what we all need to be, each in our own way. You know, so in order to start that basis of really, really working together, we need to remove things like this. We need to have leaders who have courage to take a stand and remove these obstacles to the voice of the people because the voice of the people is clear. So, mahalo for the time. I strongly, strongly ask you for your courage, to find that courage to do what is right and hold this bill in committee. Mahalo. Yes, please. Shucks, I would have loved the higher ed committee to be here for this as well. Um, aloha, my name is Carrie Kamako Kaili Malang, and I am a PhD student at UH, and I'm also junior faculty um, at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, I submitted writ written testimony in opposition of this bill, and I stand on that, but I just wanted to bring to light another issue that I haven't heard spoken about so far um, among the many smart and principled testimonies that have been shared today, and that is the question of the future of research in Hawaii and the University of Hawaii. So this bill is opened with and therefore framed by um, the importance of research in terms of science and technology in Hawaii. A lot of the um, disciplines and fields that it names I don't think actually have a stake in the creation of science and technology zones. Um, I think we all know that um, this the, the most immediate service um, that this bill provides is to one particular institute of research at UH, which is IFA, the Institute for Astronomy. Um, and so that is, that is a very, although they might bring in a lot of research money in terms of federal funds, that is a small sliver of all of the, the research fields and disciplines at the University of Hawaii, even in terms of um, students. So um, one of the problems that I see with this bill, or, or the problem that it's related to, is that the tensions between the community and these particular narrow research interests um, have, have our, a part of the university as well, right? It's not UH versus Hawaiians or anything like that. I heard a number of names. I was listening to every single name that was mentioned, and I heard a number of professors' names, and I, have a, I know all of those professors who submitted te testimony, and I have a feeling I know what their position was, as well as graduate students. And none of those professors who were named, by the way, come from Hawaiian studies. And I just point that out because often this is also misframed as an issue of Hawaiian studies 
studies versus everything else. Um, and one of those professors, Professor Noah Lincoln, um, who I cannot assert what his position was, but he's he's not even in the social sciences. He's a professor of indigenous soil sciences in CTAR, CTAR, right? Talk about controversy and research. Um, so, so within the university, um, there needs to be a conversation. There are many stakeholders in terms of rezoning conservation lands and creating science and technology zones, and none of those stakeholders have been consulted. And that lack of dialogue and consultation within the university community I see, is what I see as a huge part of this problem and something that needs to happen. Um, we need to be asking ourselves, you know, what are our research ethics? So far with Haleakala and Mauna Kea combined, both of those areas and telescopes, you know, are leased by the University of Hawaii, there's been 92 arrests, right? Is it in what class and from what professor are we taught that your research agenda can plow through a community at the cost of, of a root, you know, like the community is that opposed to it, right? We're actually taught the opposite when we think about research ethics and methodologies and that our research needs to be in service of our community. And that is the fundamental principle that is being pushed among those who are committed to a Hawaiian place of learning at the University of Hawaii, um, an indigenous serving institution. Um, those who are interested in it and have stakes in Hawaiian place of learning beyond the you know window dressing that it is, there are many faculty and students who really believe in that. And the fundamental principle that they push and teach their students is that you're research needs to be in service of your community. And I think there's a lot of awesome, wonderful, uh, globally like important and unique research being done at UH that is in service of the problems that, that Hawaii faces. Um, and a lot of those are science-based, natural sciences and STEM, and they are not the stakeholders in this question of creating these fast tracks to be able to develop in science and technology zones. So that is, that's the one um, issue that I wanted to raise that I think needs to be a bigger part of the conversation as well, um, that there are a lot of uh, people who hold stakes in research at UH who do not support this and who have absolutely nothing to gain from this, but who are going to be put in confrontation with the university. The more they sort of centralize power and um, their ability to fast track particular research agendas. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to testify? Okay, if not members, recess for decision making. House Bill number 1565. I want to thank everyone who uh, testified and sent in testimony. Um, my recommendation is to hold the bill. Uh, members, any questions or comments? Okay, please take the, yes, Representative Hope. Thank you, Chair. Just a quick comment. Um, I'd like to thank you for holding the bill, and I want to thank everybody for coming down and testifying today. Um, you know, acknowledging the Previous disrespect, as uh, noted by Mr. Seu, um, I believe we can move forward respectfully, um, and we can start by making it less intimidating for people to testify. Um, as noted by Cheryl, our offices are very welcome to help you guys out. Um, come down. Um, I see the camera. Hopefully, everybody's watching. Um, our offices are open. We can help you guys out, um, navigate the process. So thank you guys all, and thank you, Chair. I'll be voting yes. Okay. Thank you. So a yes vote means, so people don't confuse it, a yes vote means we're going to hold this bill. Okay. So members, uh, Vice Chair, take the vote. Members voting on House Bill 1565, Chair's recommendation is to hold. Noting the yes vote of Representative Holt and the excused absence of Representative Ichiyama, members, are there any other uh, no's or reservations? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you.